All right, so let's take a look at um, one of the lessons that we had in uh, this chapter, which is basically uh, what I asked you to do with your videos, and uh, take a look at the function inverses. So when we have a function like this, you're given f of x equals x squared minus 4. Your first step is to determine the inverse of that function, the inverse of f of x. Uh, just going to start by replacing f of x with y, because uh, I know that those two are equivalent. And then in order to actually start talking about the inverse, this is where I kind of create my magic, and I switch x and y. So now instead of y equals x squared minus 4, I have x equals y squared minus 4. It's at that step that now I'm talking about the inverse. So now I'm going to add uh, 4 to each side, because my goal is to get the new y by itself. Uh, so I get x plus 4 equals y squared. And uh, then I'm going to take the square root of each side. Now, because I'm putting in a square root, I have to make sure I include a plus or minus. So I get plus or minus the square root of x plus 4 equals y, because the square root of y squared is just y. So now, what, uh, what I can do is I can write this as my inverse. I can say f inverse of x equals plus or minus the square root of x plus 4. Remember that I needed to include the plus or minus because I was taking the even root of each side. If it's an odd root, you don't need to include it. All right, so step one is done. Second thing that you have to be able to do is to prove that f of x and f inverse of x are in fact inverses. And when we do that is we do the function composition. So we have to do f of f inverse of x and f inverse of f of x. And we actually do it in both directions, and we should end up with the same thing both times, and we should both end up with uh, we should end up with x both times. So I'm going to start with f of f inverse of x. Now what that means is uh, I think about what is f inverse of x. Well, that's this whole thing here. So I'm going to be plugging this radical, which is plus or minus the square root of x plus four, in for x in this function. So my function is going to be something squared minus 4. So I'll get something squared minus 4. And what that something is plus or minus the square root of x plus 4. And um, now I just see what would happen. Well, when I do um, the squared, and it's going to cancel out with the radical. Squared and a square root cancel out. And in fact, it doesn't even matter if my original was positive or negative, because when I square it, I'm just going to get the positive, which is just x plus 4. And then I attach the minus 4. And then once again, some nice things cancel. And I'm left with just x, which is really what I want to have. There we go. There's that equal sign. And uh, that's what I want. So that's in one direction. I really have to go in the other direction as well. I have to do f inverse of f of x. Uh, basically the same thing. Uh, I'm going to have f inverse of, now f of x is x squared minus 4. So I'm going to plug that in here. And now that gets plugged in for the x in my f inverse equation. And so that's... Uh, plus or minus the square root of x squared minus 4 is what I'm plugging in. And then I have the plus 4. And so you can see it has that general shape of this function, or this uh, equation. Plus or minus the square root of something plus 4. Uh, so now I see what happens. Well, the plus 4 and the minus 4 will cancel. And so I'll be left with plus or minus the square root of x squared. Now, this is a little bit tricky because we think, okay, well, the square root and the squared cancel, so does it just leave plus or minus x? That's not exactly x. Well, the deal is that if x is originally negative, when I square it, it becomes positive. The square root, I can then now choose to take the negative. So I do end up back with my original value of x. So the, everything is going to cancel kind of conveniently here, and I am going to end up with x, which is what I need. All right, so now I've proven that that is, in fact, an inverse. All right, next thing here is we're given the graph of f of x. And on the quiz, this is what you'll see. You'll see 
uh, the graph of the function. And then there's a couple of things that we can do with it. Uh, one thing we can do, first of all, is we can determine if this is actually a function by using the vertical line test. And we can see that any vertical line that we draw in is only going to hit this graph at one point. Uh, therefore, this is originally a function, which is not a problem. Um, the horizontal line test would show us that, whoa, all of these lines, all of these lines are actually hitting the graph at two different points. The only one that doesn't is actually this one right here and anything below it that doesn't hit it at all. And so that means that this, um, well, this is a function, f of x is a function, its inverse is not a function. Uh, that's not anything you need to uh, necessarily know for the quiz, but it's something that you can think about from this chapter. All right, now we get to the part that's um, a little tricky for some, but hopefully a little bit easier for others. So we're going to start by sketching the graph of f inverse of x. Well, in order to do that, the first thing I want to do is I want to draw in the line y equals x. So the line y equals x is a slope of 1 and goes through the y-intercept of 0. So using my grid, you can see I just kind of keep this. This is a slope of 1. And it, listen, it's not going to be perfect. You can use a ruler if you want, but it doesn't have to be perfect. So now, in order to um, sketch a graph of the inverse, what I want to do is I want to have symmetry because uh, I'm going to reflect the original graph of f of x around this line, y equals x. In order to do that, because this is on paper, you're probably best off trying to turn this so that the line is vertical. So let me do that here. All right, so the line is just about vertical now. Now it's a little bit easier uh, to graph because I'm going to take my blue uh, pen here. I'm make this a little bit thicker so that it stands out. And... Uh, there's a couple of things that I know. First of all, I know that it has to go through the points where the original graph hits the uh, line y equals x. Uh, and now in terms of doing the symmetry, I'm going to look uh, in this section above first, and I kind of see how this is pulling away from that line in the center. I want to do the same thing here. I want to get it to kind of go like this here. Oh, that's a little too close. I want to do better than that. There we go. That looks like some good symmetry there. Uh, and I'm going to see, you know, kind of what I have going on here. I'm looping around, and then I'm coming back up towards the line. And maybe I'm thinking that's the type of thing I need to do here. Uh, and so I'm going to just try to try to do this the best that I can. Maybe loop down and start to come back up. I know I have to hit this point right here. That looks pretty symmetric. Not, not perfect, but still pretty good. And... Um, now when I look at this, I see on this side, I'm just kind of shooting off in this direction. I get to shoot off in the same general sense here. So, yeah, something like that right there. Um, that's about as good of a sketch as I'm going to get. It's not going to be perfect, but that, you can see, has some symmetry. Now when we turn the uh, graph back around, turn the paper back to normal, and now we orient it vertically, or the normal setting again, now we can see that that's, uh, that's what we have. And now we're, we've got our sketch. Um, it's kind of a feel, but you can see that there's some symmetry there. And uh, if it's easier for you to actually position it so that the line is horizontal, you know, maybe that's something you can do. You can see some symmetry above and below. Um, but I find it easiest to do it vertically, but that's just me. It's whatever works best for you. You don't need to be perfect. You just need to give the general sense. And so now what I have is I've just... Uh, copied the sketch that I've done. I've compared it to the actual graph provided by Desmos. Uh, you can see I've got my y equals x line pretty good. And, uh, you know, you can definitely tell which one is perfect and which one is uh, constructed by me, but it's pretty close. So that's a pretty good sign that um, I've got a good estimate. Now, remember I said that my inverse was not going to be a function based on the uh, horizontal line test that I applied to f of x. We can see that that is indeed true here. So if I take the vertical line test, my inverse actually fails it. And so um, I was right to conclude that, that is not a function, even though the original is. All right, hope this helps, and uh, now you can kind of do everything you need to with the inverse of a function.